Moving on to our task number two with Confederation and EBGP. Now we have to configure EBGP between R2 and R7. And we need to configure R7 to advertise to back 10 through 12, and then make sure that all the routers can reach R7 loop back 10 through 12. So since we have completed this section right here, now we're just gonna extend that to the R7 with the EBGP session. So what we're configuring is this link right here, or the session right here. Okay, now start off with R2. We're already under the routing process, I believe. And all we need to do is just neighbor 1627.7. And that's the R7 directly connected interface with the AS of 65123. Okay, and then to make sure that the routes being learned from R7 is reachable by all these routers, we have to make sure that R2 resets the next hop to its own IPs. Since nobody has the knowledge of this subnet right here between R2 and R7, we're going to use next hop self to accomplish that. Since R1 and R5 is already part of the peer template, we're just going to or actually we have been using peer template. We use the peer session, but not peer policy. So we have to create a new peer policy with the exact same name, CID65001 with the next hop self. And then we have to configure the neighbor to inherit the template. Peer policy, CID65001, that's for R1. And we have to do that for R5. Okay, so that's all we need on R2. Next, we're going to jump over to R7. Have to configure BGP from scratch. Throughout a BGP 65123, no sync, no auto. BGP router ID 1621607. And then neighbor 1627.2 with the remote AS. In this case, from the R7 perspective, R2 is in the AS100, okay, because R7 has no knowledge whatsoever about the confederation that's going on within AS100. Okay, and R2 is going to present itself as AS100 also. So we need to do remote AS of 100 and then advertise the R7 loopback 10 through 12. 7700 mass slash 24 and then 1. And then two. Okay, so from R7, we can do show IP BGP. And you can see how all of these routes are presented to R7 as being originated from the AS100 only. So all of the information regarding confederation gets removed by R2 as it advertises out those routes to R7. Okay, as you can see, R7 knows about R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, 6, and obviously itself. All right, so this point, let's hop over to R5 and see how R5 sees the route coming in from R7. So show IP BGP 7700 longer. And you can see that the next hop for those routes are R2 since we used the next hop self command and the routes are originated from the 65123 AS number. So now we're trying to ping 7701 sourcing from loopback 10. You can see that's pingable. Okay, now hop over to R6. Same thing, just show IP BGP, sensor in 00, and then longer. You can see how R6 is learning the R7 routes. As the route comes through, it passes through the Confederation 65001. And if you do show, and the next top is the obviously R2 loopback IPs, or loopback 0 IPs, and that's your never change within the AS100. You show IP BGP. 7700, you can see that's being learned through R3. So the route came in like this. Okay, and now if you're trying to ping 7701 sourcing from loopback 10, you can see that's also pingable. Okay, but however, if you do a show IP theft, you can see that the routes or the router R6 actually take uh, four as the next hop, although it's actually preferring the route being learned from R3 in this case. Like I mentioned, just because the R6 prefer a route from R3 being learned, it doesn't mean that it has to take the route through R3 to get to the destination. Everything is based on the lowest IGP metrics to get to the next hop. Okay, obviously, this link right here only takes two hops. And that's why R6 picks R4 to get to R7. And that should complete our task number two. Okay, moving down to task number three. So, so far what we've seen is with the confederation, it's kind of a in-between EBGP and 
IBGP. And the similarity that we have seen with EBGP is that you can pretty much connect the confederation together in arbitrarily fashion. But within the confederation itself, it still requires a full mesh, just like if you were to have the a traditional IBGP. But the main difference that we have seen so far between the confederation IB, or EBGP is that the next top IP doesn't get changed as it goes through these confederation. The original next top where the routes are introduced to the network, unless you manually reset the next top, those next top IP reserve or is reserved throughout the confederation, or actually as it uh, passes through the confederation within the autonomous system. Okay, so that's the characteristic of the next top attributes. Now for our task number three, we're going to look at a couple more BGP attributes and see how they are treated inside the Thomas system that has conf a confederation configured. The first one is we look at the met value. So we're going to configure R7 to advertise all of the routes with the met of 777. And then we want to confirm that the met value is being seen by R6. Okay, so let's start off with R7. Since we're just going to insert the met value in all the routes, we can just do a blind route map. I'm going to call it 2R2. Permit 10, and then just set the metric of 777. Next, we get under the router BGP 65123, and then type the map to the neighbor 2R2 out. Don't forget to clear to make it take effect out. Okay, now going over to the receiving side, which is R2, let's look at the route. For R7 loopbacks, you can see how the metrics is coming across as 777 now. And now if you go over to R6, you can see that met same metric values are preserved as well as it passes through the confederation. Okay, so met is usually a non-transitive attribute. So what it means is usually the met value doesn't get passed through from one AS to another. But when you deal with confederation, the met value is actually preserved as it goes through or passes through different confederation. And this is just to make sure that all of the routers are seeing the same thing or preferring that met if it happens to be the lowest metrics and prefer that the same particular uh, exit point to get out the AS. That's all the routes still treated to be under the same AS. That's why they all need to see the same MET value. Okay, so just, that's for the MET. Next, we're gonna look at local preference and see how it's treated with the configuration of R2 to insert the local pref of 222 to all the route that's being learned from R7. And then we also have to make sure that the R6 also see that local pref value. Okay, same thing here since we're gonna do a blind insert of the local pref call a route map call from r7 permit 10 and then just do a set local pref 222 okay router bgp 65001 tie that to the neighbor uh, route map from r7 inbound and then as always, do a route refresh inbound. Okay, now do a show IP BGP longer. You can see now, now that uh, all the three routes have been inserted with a local pref of 222. Now going back to R6, up arrow, you can see now the local pref changed from 100 to 222. Okay, so local pref values, once inserted, is also preserved throughout the AS across the confederation for the same reason as the MET, and that is the all of the routers gets influenced consistently as far as choosing the exit point to reach the destination. Right now, moving on to our final task, which is configuration of R1. So we're going to configure R1 to stop AS65002, or the, the sub AS rather from advertising R5 lead back 10 through 12 to R4, and we are not allowed to configure any route filter on R3 or R6. So let's go back to our drawing right here. So what we're gonna do is to configure R1 right here. So R5 
has this loopback, advertise that to R1. And currently R1 can uh, advertise that to R3 and R6, and they both advertise to R4. So what we're going to do is configure R1 to tell this subautonomous system right here to stop advertise whatever routes to R4. If you watch our previous video on a route filtering, back then we talked about there's a well-known community value that you can tag your route with that will influence whoever or whichever router that receives those routes to behave certain ways. Now with the configuration, there is a community value called local AS that you can basically tag your routes with, and then that particular route will never leave the AS that the route is advertised to. In this case, it's the 65002. So once we tag those routes with the local AS community, R3 and R6 will never advertise those routes outside of the confederation. Okay, so before we start making changes on R4, just to show you that currently R4 is receiving R5 loopbacks from R3 and R6. So you can tell that it's coming from R3 and R6. Let's see, 65002 is part of the AS path. Okay, so these two routes right here coming from R3 and R6. So we're going to stop that from happening. And our configuration has to be done on R1. Since we are only dealing with R5 loop at 10 through 12, we have to come up with a prefix list that will match R5 loopback. We're going to call it R5 underscore LO permit 5500 just to cover the 3 slash 24, which, is, which are contiguous. We can do slash 22, less than equal 24. So that should include 550, 551, and 552. Route map to R3, permit 10. Match IP address prefix list, copy paste, and then we're going to set community right here, local AS. Okay, as mentioned back in the route filter videos, the local AS, the scope for the local AS is kind of in between the no export and no advertise. No advertise is targeting the destination router, telling that router not to re advertise the routes. But as for no export, that's the scope of no export is actually the entire AS. Okay, so the local AS is just a confederation within the AS, so it's kind of in between. So we're going to tag that with the local AS community. So if you're dealing with community, it's always a good idea to do IPvGP new format so that we can see it in the colon format. And then with the router 65001, first we need to enable because by default the router would not exchange community value, so we have to configure a router to send community and there's two types of community standard and extended if you enter right here by default it's just a standard which is what we're dealing with extended is later on when you deal with like MPLS VPNs and with a as, as the route target is part of that if you know what the MPLS and route target is but here we're just dealing with the regular standard community and then we have to type the route map to the neighbor, so that would be two, uh, three, out, then do clear IPBGP, out. Okay, so now R1 should be tagging R5 loopback addresses, routes, with the community of local AS. Now on the R3 side, we have to tell R3 to accept the community. So I'll do IPBGP new format, 65002. You have to enable sync community facing R1 as well as the router R6 because R3 has to pass on that community to R6 as well. Okay, now on R6, new format, 65002, and then for R6 to accept community from R3. Right, so we have to give it a second for the routes to be propagated with the community value, but let's take a look. Looks like it hasn't quite come through. Oh, there you go. You can see it, it took a couple seconds more. So now the same route that the R6 are learning through R3 has been tagged to the community called local AS. Okay, so what it means is those routes should never leave the 65002, so we should no longer see these routes coming from R3 and R6 from the R4 perspective. So going back to R4, up arrow, 
And right there, you can see the R4 is now only learning that particular route from R2, since that's the remaining BGP peer it has this way. And then you can see all those additional routes that's before and the BGP tables are no longer there. Okay, so that's how you use the local AS community attribute. And that's pretty much completes our task number three. So now that we've gone through configuring the confederation, when you compare the confederation back to the route reflector, you might say that you actually have more freedom with the confederation because there's not so much of restrictions of the way that you have to connect or create the BGP sessions between these routers. They can just almost be arbitrary. But that's only true when you go, or the connections is between the confederation. Within the confederation itself, you still have to adhere to the IBGP rules. But there's actually nothing that will stop you from combining both methods together. For, so for example, here that we have our confederation 65001, you can easily turn these full mesh into a route reflector with R1, R2 being a route reflector and R5 being the client, for example. Nevertheless, you still have to come up with different confederation and then it's just become a design decision of how you want to place each of your routers into different confederation. And sometimes this just gets dictated by how your networks are managed. For example, if you have the different groups of people managing these routers, then you can easily group them together and then place them under the same confederation. And that way you have a nice clean administrative boundary between your routers. Okay, but other than that, it's uh, both route reflector and federation works almost the same way where it's just provide the vehicle for the routes to be learned from the router. The internal packet routing itself is still relying on the lowest cost metrics to get to the next top IP, which never changes it, gets the rockets advertised within the AS. And it'll certainly be totally up to you how you would choose one method over the other. Okay, so that wraps up our video on BGP Confederation. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.